Greetings everyone, it is Andrew here from IDB with 20 new features for HomeKit inside of iOS 11. Manufacturer support is ramping up, and as well as all these other accessory categories, there are two new ones inside of iOS 11, namely sprinklers and faucets. Sprinklers allow you to water your lawn or your flower bed with just using Siri, and faucets allow you to get into your bedtime or morning routine by having your shower heat up before you get in it. Also coming are speaker support using the new AirPlay 2 protocol. Going through some of the boring developer things that people will start to see soon, we have a new event trigger for minimum and maximum thresholds as well as ranges, so based on a certain threshold, you can do certain things. Hardware now no longer requires an actual hardware chip to be inside. They can authenticate everything over software, which means older equipment already on the market can be retrofitted to work with HomeKit. You can also build stuff at home, like on a Raspberry Pi, and there are new one-time events and much, much improved latency for Bluetooth Low Energy. Inside of the HomeKit app, we're gonna have a great new pairing process for new accessories. There are now three different ways that we can add accessories to our HomeKit setup. If we tap on that plus button in the top right-hand corner and hit Add Accessory, you now have the option to scan a HomeKit code, which could be the eight digit we've seen in the past, or a new QR code, or tap to pair with NFC. NFC is gonna be really, really cool because you don't have to scan anything. You simply go near the device and tap it with your phone and you're paired and everything's done. QR is also gonna be really great because it can be really super small, only 10 by 10 millimeters. Now let's move over to the automation side of things and see all the great new features we can do. First up, that new automation button has been moved from the bottom to that top right hand corner. When I tap on that, this looks a little bit different than it has in the past. That's because it's no longer when I arrive or when I leave, it's people, because it's not just about you. So if you have a family, you don't want the lights to turn off when you leave, you want to stay on because the rest of your family is home. So now you can do things based on you or your family. So instead you can do, instead of when I arrive home, it could be anyone, when you or one of your family members arrive home. Now it is important to know, each of those family members must have at least an iOS 11 device, otherwise it's not going to work. Now we've always had this option down below for restricting time. So I can turn that on or off if I only want this to work maybe at night. I don't wanna to have to turn my lights on during the day because it's already bright out. So when we turn on restrict time, there are a few changes here as well. So we have only during the day, only at night or specific times. Tapping on that little eye will give you more information and choose things. So for restrict time, I can choose the hours I want this to run. If we do only at night and we tap on that eye, we used to have sunrise and sunset. Now I can actually do one hour before, 15 minutes before, anything before or after the sunset in 15 minute intervals up to an hour before or after. And the same thing applies for sunrise. So I don't have to turn my lights on after it gets dark, I can turn them on just before it gets dark and turn them off just after it starts to get light again. Because especially with the sunrise, it's not gonna be fully bright or dark until a little bit before or after. Now, a couple of these other features were in the home app, but they were not in third party apps. It's because Apple did not open these up to developers. So we now have this new option for time of day. So I want my lights to turn on at 5.30 or 6.30 every single day. Or maybe I don't want it to be every day, but I want it to be certain days of the week. This has now been opened up to developers. So before they would have to do things in kind of square intervals. Like I want this every seven days, which means I'd also need to set this up for every single day of the week that I wanted it to occur. Now I can do a specific time only on certain days of the week, and it'll work in third party applications as they bring out their updated apps for iOS 11. One of the really great features here is this restrict location. This is absolutely new and it's basically a gate or an occupancy gate. So I only want the lights to turn on when someone's home because otherwise it doesn't make sense. So I want only when someone's home or only when I'm home. So this would make sense to have the lights turn on Monday through Friday when I'm home. Because if I'm not home, I don't want my lights turning on. I don't want my thermostat to turn down. You can change any of these rules to only happen when people are actually home. Now, of course, a lot of privacy concerns go with something like that. Obviously, all this data is kept pretty much just within your account, but maybe you have someone in your family who doesn't want to be part of that. They don't want to be sharing their location. Well, they can easily opt out. They can turn off this share when I'm home feature and they'll no longer have that apply to them. Of course, if you have that turned off, you cannot create any rules that require that location specific gate. Now we jump back over that automation tab once more. One big problem I always had was with the timers and the motion detectors. I'd have a motion detector turn on a light, but it never turned back off. Or when I opened my living room door using that Eve presence sensor so it knows when my door is open or closed, it would turn a light on. But 
it would it would only and it would do it at night but i couldn't have it turn back off in any way i'd have to like schedule something to turn off well not anymore so now i can have my lights turn on when the door opens great perfect same as the one that passed i can even have it happen at night perfect because i don't need them to turn on during the day but now i have a new option for a timer that's right after you have a door open or your motion detected as soon as that's done it'll automatically start a timer before undoing that scene. This is really handy, and it'll reset itself every time it detects something again. So every time that door is open, it resets the timer. Or every time it detects new motion, it'll reset that timer as well. That way you don't have lights just always being on. You can see how this starts to make a lot more sense and make HomeKit a lot more powerful. So if we go ahead and set up another automation this time using a motion sensor, I've got my dining room motion sensor here. I want to detect motion, and when it detects motion, and it's at night because again i don't want to turn those lights on during the day i can have it only do this when i'm home because what's the point in doing it when i'm gone maybe the cat or something is triggering the motion detector which i don't want to turn the lights on because i'm not there so once it does detect that motion and i'm home i want to turn on a specific scene when it's at night maybe i want to turn on sunset or i want to turn on the wall switch lights or i can actually choose the in each individual light so i can choose all the different light bulbs so now if i'm home and it's night it detects motion it's gonna turn on these four lights in the living room and set it for 30 minutes. After 30 minutes, if it doesn't detect any motion, it's going to automatically turn those off. While they may not sound all that exciting, these things are game changers for HomeKit, making it so much more powerful and actually working for us instead of us having to kind of deal with these weird automation problems and holes in the HomeKit system. Another big problem was with cameras. So if you had a HomeKit capable of camera, like the Omna, perfect. But when it detects motion, it'll send you an alert. But do you really want camera alerts every time that you're home? You're home. You know that you're walking through the kitchen. And before you could either just turn those off or you can turn them on. Well, now you can actually allow those notifications, but you can restrict them on time or location. So that means it'll only give you notifications while you're out of your home. Or maybe it'll only do them at night because you only want to know if you're upstairs and text motion in the kitchen when there should not be motion in the kitchen. HomeKit got a huge makeover inside of iOS 11, even though they may not all be obvious right from the start. And soon we'll have even more control over them using the HomePod speaker system that allows you to control your home without using your phone, Apple Watch, iPad, or Apple TV at all. For the full list of changes, check out the description below. Please subscribe for more great home automation and iOS 11 videos. Otherwise, give us a thumbs up and until next time, it's Andrew for IDB.